Okay, uh, hope you're back and uh, we can continue on to the next step of this problem. Now that we've solved uh, this closed feed water heater and we know this fraction Y that's extracted from the turbine that is just enough to heat this uh, feed water to the temperature, the saturation uh, temperature of the feed water. Uh, we've got that fraction Y known. Now we need to move our control volume over to this open feed water heater and write a balance equation for it in order to determine the fraction Z that must flow into here. So I guess the trickiest part of this is to make sure we know the flows in each of the branches that are coming in here as well as to know the states that are coming in here. So uh, state one and two we already know and it, it shows here that what's flowing in the back part of the turbine one minus Y minus Z. We took off, uh, we had one coming in at eight, we had Y taken off at nine, Z taken off at 10, and so we have one minus Y minus Z remaining at 11. So that's what's coming here in this branch uh, from 11, one to two. Then coming from uh, state 10, we have the fraction Z. Coming from states nine, six, seven is the fraction Y that we've already de determined. And then, uh, of course, when we add all those up, we have the full flow rate one, the fraction is one here at uh, state three. So what does that uh, balance equation look like? Let's see, put a control volume. on the open feed water heater and let's see maybe steal this equation uh, bring it down here yep and uh, so yeah what does it look like we just have to write the parts that are coming in here and then do a little bit of algebra I'm going to wish I had a picture right here next to me but I don't so I've got 1 minus y minus z uh, times 10 okay and I'm sorry times h2 that's what's coming in right here 1 minus y minus z so let's see if I can get that in here 1 minus y minus z and that multiplies times h2 I think and that's coming into the control volume uh, the rest of this is just junk from the last last equation. One minus y, so 1 minus y minus z times h2. 1 minus y minus z. Got that. Then we've got to add in z times h10 plus a z times h10. Uh, then what else is coming in there? Plus y times h7. y times h7 And that's got to all add up to be, because we've got uh, one, two, three terms, adds up to be H3 coming out there. So that's equal to H3. Okay, so that's our first law equation. Uh, so what we need to do, we, we know uh, Z, we need to solve this for uh, the fraction uh, I'm sorry, we know why and we need to solve this for Z. So I'm not sure we'll see how my algebra skills are here this morning. But that means we're going to end up with uh, Z times 10 minus 2 is equal to 3 minus y times h7 oops I gotta get this inside my equation here alright so we move that over and then we've got to move over minus 1 minus z 1 minus y times h2 minus 1 minus y times h2 yeah, same thing. I've got outside my equation block there. Minus. Nope. Minus. 
minus there we go 1 minus y times h2 and when I do that I've got to take it off the other side over here and now oops I had a minus z there so that minus z has to go with the um, So this actually becomes Z times H10 minus H2. I hate it when that happens. H10 minus H2. I think I'm close. I apologize. Just trying to tread lightly here. Okay, so then we should be able to find Z if we can find, uh, I think some of these states, most of them we know, 2 and 3. I guess we need to find 7 and 10. Is that right? Yes, yeah, state 7 and state 10. And we need to find those. So what? how are we going to find those? Uh, state 7 recall is this throttling process from 6 to 7 that that's part of uh, handling that uh, condensate so 6 to 7 is throttling so H7 is equal to H6 that's easy then the other one we need to know is H10 and of course that's coming from the isentropic expansion through the turbine so the two properties we know about state 10 are the pressure 10 that's given but also the entropy 10 is equal to entropy 8 because it's isentropic expansion okay so uh, let's see if we can do that H7 we said we're just going to let it be equal to H6 and H10 we're going to determine as a function of the pressure and the entropy and the pressure is pressure 10 but the entropy is the same as the entropy entering the turbine alright so now we know all those terms and I think we should be able to calculate uh, calculate that fraction Z okay so Z fraction then apparently is equal to <coughs> H3 minus y fraction times h7 minus 1 minus y fraction times h2 which isn't showing up there for some reason um, 1 minus y fraction of h2 and then that's the numerator we've got to divide that by h10 minus h2 so it looks like h2 is undefined and we have to go back up here and see why that's the case let's go ahead and get these just in case I didn't have them okay so now he's saying that that fraction z actually Hmm. Sorry. Little problem with my magic here. There we go. Uh, that that fraction is about fourteen percent, thirteen point eight percent. Okay, so that's the fraction Z, and we need to know that. 
Uh, unfortunately, the problem statement didn't want to know anything about the fraction Z or anything else. He wanted to know something about how what's the net, what's the flow rate required to achieve. Let's see if I can find the problem statement. Uh, the flow rate required to um, the flow rate through the boiler for a net power output of 250 megawatts. So to answer that question, what we need to do is um, I'm giving up. I'm trying to get rid of that oval there. There we go. Uh, we need to find the net power output of the turbine per unit mass flowing through the boiler. And we need to find the work for each of the pumps per unit mass flowing through the boiler. And the way we do that is we use the same fractions uh, to like mass flow rates to multiply the enthalpies in the energy equation for each of the devices. And those fractions then are based on the ratio of the mass flow through that section relative to the mass flow rate in the boiler. So uh, we'll do that. In other words, the mass flow rate, if you will, the mass flow rate through pump one is one minus y minus z. So we'd multiply 1 minus y minus z times h2 minus h1. And if we we're doing this by hand, we would calculate the work for that pump as a v delta p, the specific volume coming in here times the pressure change across there. But regardless of which way we calculate the work for the pump uh, per unit mass, we would multiply it by 1 minus y minus z. Likewise, for the second pump now, here the, this pump 2 has the full fraction, 1, flowing through it. So we just multiply it by 1. But on the other hand, this turbine is very tricky. <laughs> We've got to take into account the three different stages and the power output for each and the uh, flow rate through each. So the first turbine stage has the full fraction flowing through it from 8 to 9. But the second turbine stage has 1 minus y flowing through it going from 9 to 10 and then flowing through the third turbine stage is the 1 minus y minus z uh, shown here. So uh, it, pretty simple to calculate that if you can absorb that concept. Uh, so let's see if, if I can try to do that. So let's uh, find the work for pump 1. for a unit mass uh, flow rate in the boiler. So pump 1 is uh, 1 minus y minus z times h2 minus, or h1 minus h2, I guess is what I've been doing for you guys. So work from uh, 1 to 2, uh, or let's call it this work pump 1. Yeah, that's equal to uh, 1 minus y frac minus z frac, that's how much flows through there, times h1 minus h2. And that's going to give me a negative number, and that's uh, fine because it's work input uh, to that. So we, we've got that one. Uh, the work in pump 2, recall, is just equal to 1 times the, um, the increase in uh, the H3 minus H4, the energy that we put into to pump 2. So H3 minus H4 And that's where most of the work, obviously, is being done in terms of the pumping because we're going from the uh, lowest pressure, or the, the intermediate pressure, 300, all the way up to the 12,500. And I guess I need to put kilojoules per kilogram in the boiler. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense or not, but this is kilojoules per kilogram uh, Yeah. Okay, and then for the turbine, we're going to do the same thing. And the turbine is very tricky. We've got the full flow rate flowing through the first part of the turbine. 
but then in the second part we've only got 1 minus y frac and that multiplies times h9 minus h8 uh, excuse me h7 um, yeah I'll get it right in a minute h9 minus h10 and then uh, to the third turbine stage we've only got 1 minus y frac minus z frac times the enthalpy drop there which is h10 minus h11 so let's see and h11 apparently is undefined but make sure I've got the right uh, numbers on here so I've got 8 minus 9, 9 minus 10, 10 minus 11 with those corresponding uh, flow rates. So if I can go up here and set uh, H11, I never defined H11. Okay, that's why we don't have it here. Uh, let's just throw it down below here. How are we going to find H11? Because we know the pressure and entropy for that isentropic expansion through the turbine. So that's pressure um, 1. Uh, pressure 11 is equal to pressure 1. And the entropy 8 is the same as it was at the turbine inlet. So um, kilojoules per kilogram and if we create some names we should be in good shape here okay so this is a very long formula and I don't think it's going to fit into our format very well but the point here this is the kilojoules per kilogram in the boiler so now we've got these individual terms identified in terms of the mass flow rates of the boiler I guess we need to somehow indicate that the W dot that he wants to have is 250 megawatts. So I'm going to write that as kilowatts. And the reason I'm writing it as kilowatts is because um, because we got the uh, energy in kilojoules, and kilojoules and kilowatts will cancel out uh, appropriately, and I'll get flow rate in kilograms per second. Okay, so uh, we're right here at the end. Let's see if we can figure this out. I need to write here W net, um, just as a, th this is the net cycle uh, output. It's really going to be the work of the turbine. And in the way I've done this, I'm going to add the work of pump two. Ah, sorry, these haven't been defined properly. Uh, so let's do it again. It's equal to the work of the turbine plus the work of pump 2 plus the work of pump 3 so it's uh, 1247 kilojoules per kilogram in the boiler and finally we can find the mass flow rate that's required from the fact that W dot is just equal to W net times M dot. In other words, M dot is equal to W dot divided by W net. And once we get these names defined, then we know the answer um, about 200 kilograms per second. Okay, so this has been a lengthy example uh, that illustrates a more complicated analysis. Hopefully it gives you a little bit of idea how to walk through going from the diagram here, uh, how to consider these flow rates in the individual branches when you do your first law in um, mass balance calculations and also how to show this schematically on the TS uh, diagram.